Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Unreal and MetaHumans tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to export your MetaHumans from Quixel Bridge into Maya for animation and bringing them back into Unreal for final render. Now this animation here I actually did in Unreal and while that was all well and good, I am much faster at animating in Maya. So I'm going to show you guys how to take this across. Um, and take the rig across and do your animation in Maya because I'll be doing some more animation tutorials in the future with this rig so uh, make sure you're subscribed if you would like to see those as well so the first thing we're going to want to do is um, not get confused by Quixel Bridge that you would open with in Unreal we actually want to open the standalone application so with Quixel Bridge open, do make sure that you are logged in, otherwise this process will be rather difficult for you. You can download a pre-existing MetaHuman if you just want to try this out for yourself, or you can go to My MetaHumans and you can select one that you've already tried. So I've got this one here, which is the one that I animated with previously, and I have already downloaded, so I won't have to go through that process during this, but I'll show you how to do go about it. I have very unceremoniously named this particular character Test Pilot 1. And what I would recommend doing for Maya and for most Maya users, including me on an almost brand new computer, I would recommend using a low resolution mesh because this download is just what we're going to be seeing in Maya. We can actually import a high resolution version of our rig into Unreal once we've done the animation on the low resolution one. Pulling high resolution textures during animation is just going to slow your computer down. So I've already downloaded the 8K resolution and the 1K resolution and tried both and I think the 1K performs a little bit better. I'll show you what it looks like on the 2K resolution though. So the first option you have will be download. We also need to go to this button here which is our download settings and we want to go to models. We want to make sure that we've got set to FBX and UA asset plus source. Get all the LODs that you want, um, but LOD 0, LOD 1 are the high uh, LODs. If you want to mess around with the textures uh, file format, be my guest, uh, JPEG is fine. Um, we're not rendering in a different engine, and JPEG is what it does in Unreal Engine anyway, and it does convert it to the Unreal asset regardless. Now the other setting that we need to adjust is the export setting. So we'll click into that. Export target will be Maya, and we want to go to uh, preset for textures will also be Maya, model, Maya, FBX, and again UA asset plus source asset. That's really important. Make sure you get that. If you only do the source asset, it won't work correctly. It's also worth pointing out that if you did only want to animate on the low resolution mesh as well as the low resolution textures, you could select a low LOD number. LOD 0 being the highest resolution, LOD 8 being the lowest resolution. However, it might be good to be able to reference the best LOD and the um, if you're going to be animating on a lower LOD. Maybe select them incrementally, like I have here. And then obviously, if you haven't already downloaded, click the download button. The download will take a while, even on a fast connection, which I have now. Um, it still was around an hour and a lot of that is I believe the processing of the model once it is downloaded. Now we need to make sure that Maya is running before we do the export so let's boot Maya. And hey make sure you're subscribed with notifications on otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. And here I'm using Maya 2020 and I believe 2022 will uh, work. I don't think support is there for 2019 anymore, however, but I don't have that version currently installed, so I can't test it. So let's click export. And we'll get some dialog boxes there in the corner, and then it will start to fire up inside of Maya. You can see that we are getting uh, the assets come through. And we just click into Maya, and we want to click yes here. And it will create a new scene with our rig. Okay, so here is the rig in Maya, as you would expect. Um, so the only thing that you'll notice, or the thing that you'll notice, is that the controls are there only for the face. Um, also, the next thing you'll notice is that the camera behaves very weirdly. The reason the camera is um, so weird, uh, just recalled, is because Z is up by default in Unreal, so you can feel it when you're tumbling the camera. Creating a new camera um, is probably the easiest way around that. Now, if you do want to set uh, Y to be up, we can just go into the settings here, button on the bottom right, go to settings, and just set the axis 
X is to be Z up or Y up, whichever is your preference. Um, and you can continue on from there, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Now just with a quick play you'll see that the eyes and uh, everything else moves as expected and similarly to what you would see in Unreal, so that's fine. Um, but we don't have the rest of the rig, so what we need to do is create a skeleton and there are two methods for this. Um, there is either the advanced skeleton method, or there's three actually, um, or the do-it-yourself manually method, which um, me personally I would not like to do because I hate rigging. And there is one other plugin that does this process uh, automated that I'm aware of, and it's by Mad Guru. I'll um, chuck a link in the description. I haven't used it myself, uh, but it's a much mm, <laughs> easier to swallow value proposition than the advanced skeleton uh, price because I think advanced skeleton is something like $2,500 for a license if you are choosing to use it commercially. If you're using it for uh, education purposes, then it is free to use and full featured. So I'll be using advanced skeleton here because it's what I have used previously. Uh, but I uh, check out the Mad Guru uh, toolset. Uh, it looks pretty solid. Uh, maybe I'll give that a quick look at some point and circle back around in a separate video. So you want to head over to animationstudios.com.au and see our friends over in Australia and make sure you download Advanced Skeleton 5. Point whatever the most recent version is. Um, I believe I'm on that because the more recent version has actually made this process a lot more automated, uh, which is pretty much worth the price of admission if you ask me. So what we want to do is click the 5 icon and go down to Tools and we will select the Name Matcher and we're going to use the obviously the meta human template here then we'll click create place fit skeleton and you'll see it come up in the outliner here and then we just want to build the advanced skeleton rig that will give you your controllers and the rest of the skeletons if you had nothing else visible and then we'll click constraint to joints so once you've done that you can just close those dialog boxes and we'll just rotate the arm there and you'll see that we've got everything bound in now so obviously this is why advanced skeleton is pretty much the king when it comes to this because all that work um, I mean even just building the skeleton and the rig itself would be days of work if you don't have one pre-existing now we're going to do some proper animation in future tutorials with this rig I'll be going through some of the basics of animation on the channel as well as how to do some more complex body mechanics uh, but for now we'll just do something very simple and we will just use the exact same tools that you always use in Maya when you're animating Alright, so we have some uh, anim animation. Uh, I don't know what she's doing. Uh, this is just what happened. Um, I, I don't know, Beyonce dance move, I would assume. It looks weird, like one of those things that she would do. So before we get this back over into Unreal, just a couple of things to bear in mind. Uh, just uh, going back to Y equals up or Z equals up, it is kind of important when you're king. Um, Normally I would actually do it with Y equals up, I just haven't switched it here, so maybe that's something you want to consider. Second thing, frame rate. I'm always on 24 frames a second, that's what you animate in, but if you were animating for a video game, obviously you'd be using 30 or 60, so also bear that in mind. And if for some reason you are being dictated to animate in PAL region animation frame rate, which would be 25 frames a second, make sure you're in that. But for every other normal person that would be 24 frames. Another thing, the uh, flip-flops or um, jandals if you're in New Zealand or thongs if you're in Australia you can actually hide those if you if you wish uh, they are just located here um, obviously just hit H on those to hide them uh, if your character is wearing shoes these shoes are to the correct height of the uh, default boots or sneakers or whatever your character comes with out of metahuman so um, that distance is kind of a good thing to be able to see zeroing the feet out also will if you see here I've got the uh, the Z translate Z which is actually the up and down uh, is set to zero there and you'll see that even if I go to the front viewport there it's pretty much on the ground it's actually not very specifically on the ground but it's close enough for jazz might be something that we'd have to adjust with the global controller 
in post. Oh, hello, the lighting came back. Well, that is your fix for the lighting. Uh, just move the global controller, the quote unquote main controller, uh, to repair that. So the export will go in two pieces, um, and you may have noticed already, but the body and the head are separate. So we're going to export them as two separate pieces of animation and then import them into Maya. And to do so, uh, the simplest one is the body. And if I hide the mesh for a moment, we'll see what we're actually selecting. This is the body uh, skeleton. This is the root driver, which is created by advanced skeleton. So make sure you don't get confused about this. So I want this a DH body colon root. So make sure you've got everything, everything selected by holding down shift and hitting the plus icon here. We can actually go show objects and just select joints and that way we've only got the joints visible select the root scroll down to the end of the chain or hierarchy and shift select that and we'll just go to file export selection okay so for the body export we will set the preset to either uh, autodesk media and entertainment or um, if you're not using uh, Maya 2020 or you're using an earlier version which doesn't have the FBX 2020 version um, and you need to do it manually for whatever reason uh, we just want to make sure that we've got animation ticked deforms models skins and blend shapes and uh, most importantly we need to bake the animation so just to ensure that you're baking the correct frame range obviously I'm using the time slider for that so it's 148 do not need to resample it we need to rename it and I'm just going to call this tutorial body anim and click export selection this selection uh, this export will take a little while so uh, give it a couple of minutes uh, go make yourself a cup of tea come back and it'll all be done once it's complete you may get a couple of errors uh, but they are fine so you can just ignore them for the moment and also to double check that you have roughly the right amount of data there um, 48 frames of animation was equal to about 12 megabytes and the um, facial animations even though there was a couple of keys was about two megabytes so expect to see something like that in terms of file size so now that's exported i'll just go back to show objects and turn joints off um, what we can do now is get the face and we actually instead of exporting the face uh, bone hierarchy what we're actually going to export is the FBX for the control rig itself uh, which is kind of a little bit confusing but is good in the sense that we will actually have a little bit of control over the final animation once we're in Unreal so if we do need to make tweaks it can be done there to select that we're just going to right click here on where it says face controls and select set members and what they will do is just select the set and you can see it's selected everything in there that is L uh, that is relevant to that rig and again we're going to go to file export selection and we'll just use that media and entertainment export settings and i'll call this tutorial underscore face and um, and export that and then we'll jump back into unreal so bearing in mind as i said earlier the animation is not going onto the actual geometry itself it is all pertaining to the rig and the skeletons or the controller in this case so what we can do is just import our go into quixel bridge uh, not the standalone because i'm using unreal 5 here so it's more easy to do it this way uh, and i will make sure i'm logged in and then i can go to my meta humans and i can select my test pilot one i will use the highest quality one last thing to bear in mind before you import into unreal is that this process may take a couple of minutes and you are going to end up with a couple of errors saying missing project settings um, and the like what i would recommend that you do is just let it load up to the maximum extent where it will require you to uh, click enable missing um, and then that way it is less likely to crash and it's more likely to be able to import because that process is fairly long you don't want to have to do it more than once then we just click add and this will add it into the project now the project i'm using actually already has it added in so once it's added in uh, you'll find it under your content directory and it'll be under metahumans and it'll be under the named version of your metahuman and here it is the bp test pilot one so we'll just drag her into the scene there 
So the last thing that the scene leads is a level sequence. So we're just going to go to cinematics, add level sequence, and I'm just going to save this under sequences and I'll call it um, tutorial sequence one. I don't think I've got one called that already. And we'll hit save and this will give us the sequencer. So we'll need to drag the blueprint for the test path for your uh, MetaHuman into the sequencer. And we do not need the MetaHuman body control rig. So we're going to delete that. And we'll go back and I'll just go to where my animation was exported to. I'm just going to add in the body animation first. And for the skeleton, we want the if you just type in meta, you'll get meta human base scale. And this is the skeleton that you'll use for any meta human at this time. Uh, everything else you can say, uh, keep as default and we'll just import that. And we'll ignore those errors. So back in the sequencer, we'll go to the body and animation. We'll check that's gone in first. So we will scroll down find your animation mine was called tutorial and we'll see here animate so at the moment obviously bear in mind that the facial animation is not there as you can see so we'll bring that in now what we need to do is make sure we've got the control board there we can just right click on it and we'll select import control rig fbx We'll select the face anim open and just ensure that this drop down box here is select to is set to metahuman control mapping and now we'll see that she is blinking like i animated there earlier in maya so the last small issue that we need to remedy is that if i just scroll prior to the animation you'll see that the scale changes and this is because of the animation targeting the wrong size of metahuman so when you created your metahuman you would have noticed that you could use different sized people so what we need to do is go back over to the content browser and we'll go to where the animation is we'll double click there and bring up the blueprint and at the top here we've got a option for retarget source and we need to find the correct version of our metahuman so to find out what our one is what we can do is just jump back into the blueprint for our metahuman and if we select body here on the left hand side we can see that the mesh skeletal mesh is f tall narrow body so we'll go back to our animation and we'll select a retarget of F tall narrow body. So that is all. Um, I tried to make this as comprehensive as possible so you didn't have to search through many, many different videos and uh, documents on how to learn how to do this workflow. I'll be covering a lot of animation stuff for MetaHumans and just animation in general. So if you are interested in how to animate these well, obviously this is not a great example of animation, but if you want to see some animation examples, have a look at the channel. Uh, I've got some previews here for you and all the cartoon stuff that I've done as well. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. They'll be coming out very shortly. We'll be working with this rig and others in Unreal. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope it helped. Make sure you click like and all that. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.